We're going to be going through chapter 9.1, which is all about uh, how xylem gets transported in a plant. And this is an HL level chapter. Um, it's probably going to be broken into about 15 minute videos and whatever you don't finish will be homework. So make sure you guys are being diligent about answering the questions and taking notes as we go. I'm hoping most of this will be review for you. Okay, so some of the applications and skills. You do have to be able to draw the primary structure of xylem. You have to be able to measure transpiration rates using potometers. This is gonna be our seventh prescribed lab. We're going to be doing that later this week, if not the beginning of next week. And then um, you're going to also be looking at, uh, compared with this, you're going to be actually designing an experiment using the potometers to look at the effect of temperature and humidity on transpiration rates. So these two skills are going to be combined. Okay, quick review on the properties of water. Water has cohesive properties. This is because of the hydrogen bonds within water. Water essentially would rather bond with itself than other surfaces because those hydrogen bonds are so strong. They are a weaker bond compared to the covalent bonds found within water, but it's strong enough. And um, what happens with the hydrogen bonds is that having so many water molecules bonded together using hydrogen bonds, it creates a thin film on the surface of the water. This is all review from chapter 2.2. And what this is called is surface tension. This allows uh, organisms to, I guess, float on top of the water more easily. This is also part of capillary action, which is why we are reviewing it now. Additionally, adhesion is essentially the opposite. This is water's desire, I guess you could say, to stick to other surfaces rather than itself. So in this case right here, this is a combination of both cohesion and, e and adhesion. The cohesion is, is existing within this water droplet where the water itself is actually defying gravity. It would rather be together than on anything else. And right here is adhesion, which is this water droplet just clinging to the side of this stem here. Now capillary action is why I am addressing these two properties of water with you again. We care because obviously we're in plants and capillary action is how water gets from the ground all the way up to the very tip of every tree. And essentially, it's a combination of adhesion and cohesion. You need to be aware of this because this is what drives capillary action. First of all, we have evaporation through the leaf. This is known as transpiration. We're going to cover this again in a second. But this basically starts to create a vacuum within the capillary tube, this transpiration through the leaf. As water molecules leave the leaf, it's going to pull the other molecules with it behind. This is cohesion. Water's desire to bond with itself, it's going to draw up the molecules. And adhesion is water's desire to bond with the wall of the xylem, and that's going to allow it to be pulled up as well. So this is what causes capillary action and uptake from the roots. So your basic understanding is that transpiration is going to happen because of gas exchange in the leaf. Gas exchange happens because of photosynthesis. And basically we know that it is exchange of water and carbon dioxide. Oxygen must be released from the plant and CO2 must be brought into the plant in order for photosynthesis to happen. That happens right through these pores, these pores are called stomata. I'm hoping you remember this from ninth grade biology. Stomata are pores, and on the outside of each of these stomata pores, these are guard cells, and they're found in pairs, and they basically um, 
control when the stomata are open and when they're closed. And this is what's going to allow for gas exchange. This is also how plants lose water through transpiration. Okay, so uh, this is a closer look of the stomata themselves. You can see that the stomata is, is very small. This is just the pore right here. And it's surrounded by two cells on the outside called guard cells. I'm going to explain to you how guard cells open and close the stomata in just a second. But basically, um, all of this is wrapped around an epidermis. This is the epidermis is basically a waxy cuticle and um, it's essentially impermeable to carbon dioxide and water. So the only place that we can have gas exchange is right here in this stomatal pore where CO2 gets brought in, oxygen gets brought out, and we also have water slipped out as well. Sometimes the stomata um, cause the water loss of the plant to be pretty severe. And um, what happens if this, obviously the plant can't lose too much water, but it does need to exchange its gases. So it has to do this balance between getting what it needs and not losing what it needs. So if the water loss is too severe, then the stomata or the stoma are gonna close. And um, the reason why they're gonna close is because the mesophyll cells, which I'm gonna show you in a minute, release what's known as abscisic acid, which is a hormone. And this is gonna tell these stomata to close. Okay. This is just a recap of what I was talking to you about before and how capillary action works. If you need to go back to that previous section, go ahead. I'm not going to repeat myself. Here's all the information written out for you um, and how it's a combination of cohesion and adhesion and transpiration. And what this does is it creates a suction to draw the water up. Okay, so the cohesion um, allows for transport under tension. This is a new understanding. What we're looking at is a cylinder, and this is what carries uh, what the xylem um, is. Xylem carries water. We're going to learn in the next chapter what phloem is, but xylem carries water, and it's going to carry it from the roots all the way up. You can see here the same structures just in reality, what it actually truly looks like. Okay, so the outside of each of these cells is made of cellulose. You know that plant cells are made of cellulose. And then in between the cells are what's known as lignin rings. And these lignin rings, these um, provide structure for the xylem and allow this is one of the things that makes um, plants able to grow so tall and these lignin rings they're actually built uh, annually and so I know many of you are aware of the fact that you can count the rings on a tree and that tells you how old it is that's actually true for once one of those things that you learn is true and I'll show you a picture of that in just a second okay so what we're going to look at here is basically the basic structure of the plant and what you should be aware of. Um, water gets absorbed through one, obviously, through the roots. And then um, this develops into some pressure within the root right here. And this allows for us to have some movement, capillary movement of the water in the stem within the xylem. The water moves through what's known as the petiole, which is um, the little base here on the leaf or to the leaf. And then uh, the leaf absorbs light and the temperature increases. So the, the leaf itself is going to warm up. Water vapor, um, water is going to basically turn into vapor within the leaf because of 
the heat. So you'll notice that this is the leaf right here. This is the same structures. The most of the leaf cells are on the top and the pores are actually found underneath the leaf. That's what I'm trying to show you here um, in this picture. So the pores are found underneath the leaf and um, that's because it helps this is the bottom of the leaf is slightly cooler than the top of the leaf because that's where it attracts most of the sunlight. So this means that we're going to have a little bit less evaporation through the pores. Um, but we are still going to lose some water because basically within space six, water is going to become vapor, water vapor, and it's going to exit out through those guard cells through the stoma. Go ahead and answer me this question. Which process and cause are responsible for water uptake by the roots? Okay, the correct answer in this case was osmosis. Um, and the cause is because solute concentration in the root is greater than in the soil. Okay, as mentioned before, transpiration is evaporation from the leaf. We know water gets drawn in from the roots. It gets dragged up through a series of cohesion and adhesion, and then it turns into water vapor within the leaf and evaporates through the leaf, um, the stomata under at the bottom of the leaf. This is basically just a recap of everything that I talked about, I would recommend you pause the video and write down anything that looks unfamiliar or new to you. But I have addressed each one here and you should know that this theory is called the cohesion tension theory. And that is essentially a the fact that water evaporates from the leaf creates this tension and the cohesion and adhesion are going to be drawing up through the xylem. And this is called transpiration pull. The loss of water through transpiration is going to generate a negative pressure. And therefore, transpiration pull. And it's going to pull these water molecules right up. So we're going to draw more into the leaf. Higher rates of transpiration lead to what's known as transpiration stream and therefore higher uptakes of water. So if you think the obviously um, areas that are tropical, like the one we live in, it's very warm, so we're gonna have more transpiration, but luckily we have a lot of water in the soil because of the rain, and therefore it allows transpiration stream. Okay, so here what you can see is we have uh, more than one xylem tubule next to each other. It's not just one tube that draws the water up, but you do have to know that the water is in one one way flow. It's always being drawn up into the plant and um, they actually have pits or por uh, porous walls that allow um, the xylem to also flow sideways to help balance or fill all of these xylem tubes and we've already addressed why the water gets pulled up and that's because of transpiration pull through cohesion adhesion and transpiration this is just a quick animation to demonstrate to you how transport in plants works we have not addressed phloem yet but phloem is food or sap for the tree that they make through the process of photosynthesis. That's happening here in four. Sugar, like glucose, is produced through photosynthesis and that typically flows down and all around the tree. It's not just down, but in this graphic you can see that it is. And now we have um, at one, the, root, the roots are gonna absorb the waters and minerals from the soil. That's going to transport through the xylem all the way up to the leaves. As we mentioned before, we're going to lose water through transpiration, through the stomata, and um, that's going to draw more water up underneath. So we're going to stop there and then pick up on the next video.